Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday. In today's video, we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another bolt action unit. This time we have in the crosshairs one of my favourite light tanks of World War II. Fast, hard hitting with a light auto cannon, and also very reasonably priced. I am talking about the Panzer II Aus L Lux, also known as the Lynx. And so without further ado, let's take a look at the good, the bad and the ugly of this bolt action unit. As is tradition, let's begin with a brief overview of the unit in question's cost, weapons, damage value and special rules. As with most bolt action units, the cost of the Lux is dependent on what veterancy you take it at. If you take it as a regular, it will cost 115 points and if you take it as a veteran, it will cost 138 points. Interestingly, there is no option to take this vehicle as an inexperienced unit. Now, of course, what veterancy you take this at will depend on what else is in your list. But for most scenarios, I would personally recommend taking it as a regular. Whilst taking it as a veteran will allow you to have a better leadership value and will also help to ignore pins from weapons that won't be able to penetrate the Lux's armor. Unfortunately, with it being a light tank, most weapons that do target it will be able to damage it. And so the ability to ignore those pins is rarely going to come up, except for in circumstances where you're being shot at by very, very light anti-tank weapons with very low penetration values. For its weapons, the Panzer II L comes equipped with one turret mounted light autocannon with a coaxial MMG as standard. And that's it. There are no weapon options with this vehicle. You just get the one loadout. The Lux has a damage value of 8 plus, making it a light tank under bolt action rules. This means it is more heavily armored than many half tracks and armored cars, but. Don't be surprised if, if you feel one of these things, it is the lightest main tank on the table. Finally, the Lux has one special rule, and it's a good one. It's got Recce. We've covered Recce before on other videos, but just in case you're not familiar with it, what this rule allows you to do is move the tank, even in reverse, if you are targeted by an enemy unit. And if the enemy unit can no longer see you, let's say you move behind some line of sight blocking or dense terrain, then the enemy unit shot is wasted. It's a very powerful ability that can cause units that are much more powerful and much more expensive than the Lukes to waste a valuable turn. Now that covers the basic stats of the Panzer, but now let's lift up the rock and have a proper deep dive into this unit. Let's take a look at what makes it good and what some of its weaknesses are. In my opinion, the best thing about the Panzer II Lux is how well it fits into the current bolt action meta. There is a general understanding that heavier tanks, even ones like medium tanks, are overcosted. They often only fire one shot, and if that shot misses, then that's it, the tank is useless for a turn. Maybe it can spurt some ineffective medium machine gun fire around, but then if you're taking it for the medium machine gun, you're taking a very, very expensive MMG team, essentially. Lighter tanks are the order of the day. They tend to be a lot cheaper and therefore they're less of an investment while still getting you armor on the board. What we've got to remember is even a light tank is an absolute menace to a unit that doesn't have any AT. It doesn't matter to that squad of American riflemen if it's a Panzer III bearing down on them or if it's a Panzer II Lux. Because either way, they're not going to be able to penetrate its armor with their small arms like the rifles and the BARs and the light machine guns. But from the German perspective, the Panzer III costs 195 points if it's a medium variant. Even if you take it as a light variant with a medium AT gun, it still costs 155 points. But the Lux has only cost 115 so you get significant savings but the same battlefield effect another big positive 
of the Panzer II L is the light automatic cannon. That has enough volume of fire, because it fires two shots, not one, to make sure it's going to get that hit. It's also slightly high explosive, meaning that it fires a one inch template. So if you do get a hit, you're not just going to atomize one guy, you'll actually get two, and if your opponent has bunched up, three people under that template. It could also do extra pins. On a four plus, it essentially does an extra pin with it being a D2 high explosive weapon. And it's got decent penetrative power, pen plus two. Against veterans, it's still going to move them on threes, which is much, much better than trying to fish for fives and sixes. Any other infantry, you're winning on twos. And again, into a lot of the bot action meta units, such as trucks and transports, the auto cannon is going to really help you hunt down those fast moving units, which can score a lot of points if you start doing missions like envelopment or double envelopment. Unfortunately, Panzer II does have a bit of a drawback, and that is it's not very good at handling other enemy tanks. It's all well and good you intending to use your Panzer II to run around the field and bully enemy infantry, but if your opponent brings something as simple as a T-34, as a bog standard Sherman, or as a Cromwell tank, a rather splendid Cromwell tank, and they use it to counter your Panzer II and your Panzer II L, then you're going to get into a tank fight you're not going to be able to win. Because you can't physically penetrate their armor, and their fairly basic medium AT gun is going to put a round through the front and out of the back of your vehicle. The good news is that you can kind of counter their counter with your recce rule. Don't forget that if they do put their big tank against you and they commit it to taking out your tank, your looks can run rings around them by just every time they target you, you just recce out of the way. Now sure this is taking your looks somewhat out of the fight, but remember, your looks is only 115 points. Most medium tanks out there cost 200 plus points. So they're spending double the points to take out one of your units than you are to essentially make their unit do nothing on the battlefield. A clever use of a bait looks, where you purposely put it out there and hope your opponent goes for it, committing his tank on a far flank where actually it's not going to do much good and then you can use the rest of your army to win maybe in the middle and on the other flank. That is a definite tactic that you can do with the Lux, thanks to it having Recce. Honestly, just having a Recce tank is a really big deal. And the fact that you could then pair this with a Recce armoured car would give you access to all sorts of shenanigans. But, as good as the Lux is, it does have a restriction. And that is, it's only a late war vehicle. They were produced between 1944 and 1945. For most pickup games, this won't be a problem. But if you agree with your opponent that you're only going to be playing in a certain time period or in a certain theatre, then you may not be able to take advantage of the Lux. You could still take a regular Panzer II, Panzer II A, B, C and F, and that has the same weapon and it's the same light tank. It's almost identical to the Lux. It's even a little bit cheaper. It only costs 105 points for a regular one. But the big difference is you don't have the recce. So you could get the bully aspect of it. You could still use it to go after enemy infantry. But if that enemy tank turns up, you might be in trouble with an earlier Panzer II variant. Overall, I think the Panzer II and especially the Lux are a fantastic unit with enough armor to make it survival against small arms and light AT. It's fast it, with the recce and it's got enough of a punch to make it a genuine threat on the battlefield. Of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you like fielding these lighter tanks or have you found that you really need a bit of heavier armor to get the job done. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create 
more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server. An online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patreons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney Thank you guys so much. Your incredible generosity is a massive part of how I'm able to do Morning Glory full time. And it is a big driving force behind the channel. But I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.